Here we go. Trigger warning, spoiler alert. Is this my best side? <laughs> you are experiencing the Tom Kelly Show. Uh, podcasting from the Upper West Side. I had a whole list of uh, shows I wanted to do with my friend, mentor, uh, former Rosie O'Donnell, head writer and supervising producer, uh, Jeanette Barber, former Sirius XM radio host, Jeanette Barber. What other amazing things do we say about you? A, a, a writer, New York Times bestselling writer, Jeanette Barber. Uh, what, are, what are the USA other... Today. USA Today. I just have to be honest. You know what I love? When you say USA Today best writer implies that you are a successful writer for people who can't read. But... <laughs> But let's put that on the side. And the reason why I drop all the credits, accomplished stand-up comedian Jeanette Barber. What are the other uh, What are the other big titles we use for you? Well, I'm very good at weight loss. Okay, at her so, goal weight, Jeanette Barber. Yes, I weigh uh, 135. My top weight was 275 pounds. Yes. It's an expertise. That's why I think I should claim that as a title. Okay, and then uh, the other one I have is a Food Network TV. Oh yeah, I, I forgot about that for for uh, thirteen weeks. Yeah, I had uh, uh, we created the show and uh, hosted the show and. I learned to cook. Producer, <laughs> consultant. Oh, well, you know, F it. We're just going to cover your face. It'll yeah. be okay. Uh, so back to you. Uh, yeah. So the reason why I drop all of these titles is you and I were just having a, I was planning to do one show with you. And then we were having another separate great conversation over there on the couch mm -hmm. uh, about the perception of success, what was the phrase you used? It's the perception of success. That is, um, what, what I was saying is that to the extent that I have been success, that's what I, uh, I, I trace it to. Way back in the beginning, you create the perception of success. If people think you're successful, they will want you. Nobody is interested in you because you need something. Nobody right. is interested in you because I don't have a gig this Saturday, if only I could get one. No one cares. Um, but if they think you're busy, if they right. think you don't have any room, so uh, I, when I when I started uh, when I started stand up, um, uh, th the truth is I couldn't get arrested in Manhattan, uh, and uh, I passed at the comic strip, but I I wasn't I wasn't so you were spots. working but not working a lot exactly, okay. and I would get so, you know I would get uh, you know a few spots, but I, but I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't doing great, and uh, then uh, it was actually Larry Miller uh, who would come in and watch me. And I never knew why, because we weren't even friends. And he said, uh, and, and he would call some friends, and he did. So I started working on the road. And, uh, but the, this one particular uh, thing, my first time out, it was punchlines. And they were, they were a, a, at the time, an incredibly uh, prestige, a pre good chain uh, to work at. And uh, I had Columbia, uh, uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and Sandy Springs, the main club. Uh, then I had uh, two and a half months without a single thing, not a single thing, not okay. a penny coming in. And then I was going to Montgomery and some other place in Alabama. And uh, but I, I'd stop into the club and uh, I would just go, yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm working. Uh, you know, I was just at Sandy Springs, and you know, I, I always love it there. I'd never. Been okay, there. I think we're we're all. Yeah. I think here's the first yeah. thing we were saying. You you were yelling at me on the couch. Oh well, that. I okay, didn't know you so to we were talking about. Well, you could yell at me. No, it's fine. We're, we're, we're so this is the weird thing about this podcast, and maybe the podcast theme will change after this. Uh, but where is the thin line between, like I was telling you everything that went wrong okay. on a certain ah, week. got it. Okay. And then you were like, Tom, you could tell that story to me, but yes. you can't tell that story at the clubs. You can't tell that story here. Right. You can't do this. And I, I guess the question is, where is the thin line between being real and full of poop? You know, where is the thin line between being that guy uh, who's real and like I like this whole podcast and, uh -huh. and in some ways because of the advice you've given me uh, we have been talking about everything wrong with my life in 2020 and then I saw my friend Jay Caparaz out in Los Angeles a, a couple of weeks days or years ago depending on when this airs and Caparaz said Tom I do listen to your podcast but I don't listen that much because when I listen I worry about you <laughs> And listen, you're the one who loved me talking solo into the microphone in and Maine. And I still do. And I was telling these long stories about things that went right, things that went wrong. Um, and then I was telling you the stories about whatever went wrong in my day. And I'm not even saying it now because I want to not, I don't want to counter. Your line was, Tom, don't counter the image that you're successful. Right. I, I think that, uh, that, especially in terms of the podcast, when it's your personal life. 
when it's your feelings, right. then go for it. But when it's your career, uh, you don't lie. But uh, a friend, uh, my, my, one of my very close friend's mother once said that she, it was about going on a date, but um, where you feel like you have to tell the person everything. And uh, she said, Jeanette, it's not a confessional. You can be selective in what you tell, and you should be selective. It's a first date, not a confessional. Right. Okay. And what you uh, you can. So also, you're saying too, it's a podcast, not a confessional. Not a confessional, and it's also what you say to yourself matters. If you're saying it on the podcast, you're also saying it to yourself, and you really need to talk. Uh, that's how you, you ruin your life is um, by focusing on the bad. It's one thing to say, this messed up thing happened. See, I said messed. Right. It's hard. Um, uh, this messed up thing happened, and then I did this, and I'm doing this, and bring it around. But you can't, you can't rest. And I'm not talking about a podcast. I'm talking about life. You can't rest in the, this part doesn't work. Okay. So let's go through a few things. You're doing stand-up. You were, for lack of a better word, and using your words, incredibly heavy, incredibly fat. Yeah, well, in those days, uh, well, in those early stand-up, I was uh, like 170, 180, a flyweight. Okay. Um, the 275. You ballooned up the 275. No, the 275 was before stand-up. But okay. then during the Rosie show, I went up to uh, 200. During uh, Rosie radio, I went up to 220. Then I went down to 180. It's just, it's okay. ridiculous. And um, for those of you graphing Jeanette's weight, thank you for, uh, thank you for keeping yeah. your notes. But- we, I have you, enough skin to run my own burn unit. But you had a line about how your comedy career got better when you got skinny. Uh, no, the line was, um, yes, it did, uh, because my own confidence got better. Do you want me to tell that's the, yeah, uh, the Mike the, Sweeney yeah, story? story. Um, so uh, uh, we were, uh, Mike Sweeney is, uh, Con was always Conan O'Brien's head writer. O'Brien's head writer and uh, an inspiration the, to yeah. me as a comic. We've mentioned his name on the yeah, podcast before. he is before. the greatest he guy. He has no idea who the hell I am, but he was very nice to me. He, I saw him 20 years later, um, and, uh, and I said, thank you. And he went, oh, I didn't know that mattered uh, to you. Uh, we were driving, and I had just lost weight, and I was really thin, probably five pounds less than this. And, uh, and uh, Sweeney, so it was, you know, way down. And uh, Sweeney says, uh, uh, what's it you know, like being uh, you know, thin? And I started going, oh, well, you know, people that wouldn't talk to me before are talking to me now. And uh, I'm getting on at clubs. You know, people are putting me on at clubs and they're talking to me when they wouldn't even talk to me before. And Mike, and I think this was big because we weren't close friends. He went right. through this discomfort to right. say to me, uh, you know, Jeanette, I'm sure that's uh, true, but um, you were uh, kind of embarrassing to be around when you were really fat because you were always so down on yourself. And that, yeah. Yeah. So it wasn't that I so, was fat that they didn't like me. They didn't like my personality. So that was Well, they didn't like your f weight and your personality. Yeah. I, I mean, now, but this is where I used to get better, or I get better. And this, is, uh, this was in therapy an hour ago, was I found with women, they all loved me once I was working at TV shows and had health insurance and their first boyfriends, husbands, or whatever didn't work uh -huh. out. Uh, arguably, once I got my job, once I started performing for millions, that was my equivalent of losing weight. Well, you, when your confidence and your opinion about yourself changes, uh, then everybody's going to react to you differently. Some of it is, uh, yeah, some of it's going to be, oh, look what he's got. But you were, bitter, you were bitter, you were bitter you were bitter when you were fat and not working, for I, lack of a better word. I was bitter when I was thin and not working. I was bitter when but, I was young. But you got bitter when you lost weight and people started paying attention to you. Well, I, I didn't. I was just bitching to Mike in the car. Um, my career bitterness uh, was, uh, was earlier when everybody was getting spots and I wasn't. And uh, an another uh, friend who didn't know me well went out on the limb to uh, of saying something confrontational and uncomfortable. Um, he took me out of the club uh, and he said, uh, you either have to handle the way you feel in this club or you need to leave because you're turning everybody off. And uh, that was hard to hear. It was uh, Scott Carter. I will admire him for the and rest of my life. And he what works with Bill Maher now? He's yeah, in? he's yeah. been with him forever. And he, does, he has a one person show that's killer. And he's one of the most talented people I've ever known. Um, and, uh, and, but I think that was a big deal for him to do that for me. And I realized I couldn't handle my feelings at that time. So I went out on the road. And I, that was when I got the, then I got the, the, the punchline job. And if I talked, whenever I would stop in, it was always, yeah, I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm working. And I stuck on what worked. I never focused on what didn't work. I don't mean privately. You know I can bitch like a, you know. Yeah, well, not yet. Yeah. But, uh, but publicly, 
Um, By the way, it is surprising that you're giving me this speech on positivity, right. but it's an interesting angle. Yeah. Uh, you also knew me in a negative part of my life, but... Uh, but Quite a few. Quite a few. <laughs> yeah. Negative parts at this yeah. point, being old friends. Okay, this uh, this is a complete fake. This is yeah. not even me. I'm a real bitch. Um, but, uh, but that perception, and everybody thought I was successful, and so then I started getting more and more and more work. I started headlining because I told people I could. I sucked. And then I didn't because... I pretended I didn't. And that is really how I got uh, where I got. So I'm with you on everything you yeah. said. I'm asking purely as a podcast host here. Uh -huh. uh, where is the thin line between being honest and lying to people? You know, like, I mean, like you talk about the perception of success. Like I had a great story about a guy who I didn't even want to approach me. Uh, I'll, I'll drop some of the names on this one later, uh -huh. but he was trying to book old TV stars on podcasts, right? He mm -hmm. approached me and I'm like, you know what? Oh, one of these two names. Oh, Bruce Valanche. Uh, I guess that would be nice, you know? And it was, I, one of the names was Bruce Valanche. I'm like, if you really have Bruce Valanche, fine. And the guy spent a lot of time telling me about how, who he was. And he's like, uh, well, how many listeners do you get on the podcast? And at this point, this is all over Facebook. I'm uh -huh. bored of talking to the guy. And I said, uh, uh, 20,000. And he goes, well, you're going to have to get your numbers up if uh -huh. you want to deal with me. And I went nuts. Uh, because one, 20,000 is substantially higher than what we're drawing. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, but I guess my thing is, you know, I probably could have said things like, I keep the metrics private. I could have done this. I could have done that. I went very mean on the guy. I called him a has-been yeah. who never was. That's which what is you must never, ever, 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 ever do. What's that? You you don't go mean on people. Yeah. And you don't say, because you don't know where he's going to be later, and then you'll just be remembered as an asshole. Um, In all fairness to me, he's about 70-something and will probably be dead later. But That's, that's a comfort. I'm uh, almost 69, so. <laughs> well, thanks. Oops. And suddenly, <laughs> all my elderly, all my senior citizen listeners, the ones that can hit stop ha are, and the ones that haven't just died. Yeah, they um, just really had heart attacks out of disappointment, but it's fine. <laughs> Don't, don't feel bad. So, yeah, I guess I like that idea of a... Per, like, but now, here's another one. I, I, I'm meeting with one guy who, whenever you say hi to him, he always tells you what's going great in his life. Like, actually, there's a great line about a comedy booker. Actually, I, 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 well, you, you correct this sentence. I'll tell okay. the story the way I want to tell. There's a comedy booker from a suburb outside of New York who never booked me who had a great story about a comedian I don't like. Uh, and the line was, you'd say, hey, Johnny McPherson was the guy's name, wink. Uh, Johnny McPherson would see Bob the Booker, and Johnny McPherson would say, hey, Bob, I just did a Mets commercial, and just keep walking. Yeah. Is well, that's, no, there's, there's a perception of success, and then there's a, a hopeless self-promoting bragger, which makes you look desperate. Now, where's the damn line? The line is, I didn't walk into, the, I'll just stick with that same story back in the old days. I didn't walk into the strip and say, hi, oh, everybody, I've been working. I've, it was somebody to come up and go, what have you been up to? Oh, yeah, I was working, and uh, now I'm going to go down to Montgomery. I left out the pack. There was five months in between. Um, so I told the truth, but I, I didn't add any uh, frustration. I didn't, you know, go, yeah, I'm working, but I had to buy my own train fare. This is, you know. So I, like, so I yeah. liked it. There's a morsel of wisdom right. in there but which it's is, also embarrassing i know somebody who i'll not mention um but i but no matter where you go the the uh, uh, the listing of the credits and then the kiss of death in addition to the uh, the the listing of the credits i was going um yeah and i'm a very good actress too i mean i'm brilliant really oh oh that is just a tattoo of you're a failure on your head so it's funny. I'm going through that. So first of all, the, 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 the thing I got out of that last conversation is uh, share the good news, edit out the bad news. You're saying at least in the workplace. Only, yeah, in real life, do whatever you like. Um, but uh, be who you want to be. Should I be telling the podcast listeners about the stories of me not getting jobs? No. Why? Because uh, why is it gripping that you didn't get a job? Talk about the ones you did get. Um, uh, I didn't. I, I really wanted this, and I didn't. Uh, didn't get it. Okay. Well, that's gripping. I mean, where's the beginning, middle, and end? Okay. 
Uh, be who you want to be. That's how you become who you want to be. Okay. I like that. Now, I have been talking about perception. Uh, I have been doing this arguably, if this is the year 2022, mm-hmm. depending on what year you start the clock, I've either been doing this 20 years or 24 years. Mm-hmm. Or if we count a few shows I did in high school, 26. Mm-hmm. Uh, God, no, 28. But yeah, like we go back to 94, shoot. Uh I had a thought while I was out in L.A. It was fun to go out. What I loved about being out in Los Angeles was uh, I had, uh, you've heard of big dick energy? Yes. Okay, I had big beginner energy, which was I was out there. Most of the people had no clue who I was. And I was, I could paint a picture of whatever I wanted. Like I know people who would go to college and then they would change their names. Like uh, there was a guy who, named Matt Fortunato, who I went to high school with, and his full name was Evan Matt Fortunato. And I think when he went to college, and I think he went to MIT, he started using Evan again. You know, I know another person whose name was uh, Elaine, and she changed her name to Elaine. I don't know. Make, I can't say the second person's name, but, does, but I know someone else mm-hmm. who changed the pronunciation of their name. So I'm thinking if I were to go to a new place or go to a new club where nobody knows me, instead of introducing myself as... Tom Kelly, veteran comedian who has yet to crack, say, hi, I've been just doing this two years. Um, Here's what I think is weird about you. Well, where's my list? Yes. Um, What I think is weird about you is you're one of the uh, more successful people I know. Financially. And actually on a lot of levels. Financially, I've done a lot of things. uh, But we could argue that for other people who judge... Uh, I do not have the accomplishments that generate buzz as a performer. You know who I performer. think judges? Who? You. Oh, I think I do for sure. That's the problem. No, I you, disagree with that. Because you could walk in as, um, I've only been doing it a couple of years, but then you leave out uh, all of the, uh, you're a top warm-up in some of the big shows. Yeah, but that is also for club, or I guess it's it's for what you want to do and where you want to do it. Uh, I would argue Credits that like don't wear out. I cannot say what I think what, they do. And well, it, like, I just I'm, had this experience, and I cannot say what it's about. But um, I, you know, I've got a, all of those statues. I have six Emmy awards, and um, you know, Emmy I, award winning. Forgot to put that in the beginning. Yeah, you know, I think that they, uh, you know, because but I haven't won one uh, since two thousand eight. So I think, what does it matter? It matters just as much. Well, I'm going to argue for talking about doing warm up at the viewer. Good morning, America. Uh, people start. Uh, bo- actually, I've had I played it on the podcast. People booing those really? credits. Yeah. Um, another one is I found, and this is more where I need to reinvent my package. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sounds dirty. Yes, uh, and I don't know how you could reinvent a dirty package, though. Yeah. To be fair, uh, learn a swirl, learn a uh-huh. few moves. Uh, but uh, like my demo tape used to be, I used to send uh-huh. people me doing stand up on the View, and I looked at I'm like, that's seven years ago now. It's time for yeah. something new. Uh, and I would argue one way to seem new is to not let people know you're old. Oh, well, there's a better way to seem new. Yeah? Be new. How uh, does, what does I've that mean to you? I've told you this story. Uh, there was a comic, a Southern from somewhere. His name was Grant Turner. Um, he was a headliner, very solid. Uh, probably did some of Tonight's show or something. This was a long time ago. And he, he worked with a suit and tie. Um, very, you know, absolutely solidly uh, good. And uh, it worked all the time. And then he got start, He just got sick of himself. And uh, I went down. And I was at Sandy Springs. Uh, this, uh, Where is Sandy Springs? In Atlanta. Okay. It's, this, it's the main club. It's still there. It's a club called Sandy Springs. No, it's uh, it's the punchline in Sandy gotcha, Springs. Gotcha, but that's gotcha. what everybody calls it. Okay, Grant Turner. Um, and uh, I come down and... Uh, they, I had to open, and I I did open in the beginning, and then I, I didn't. But then, but they wanted me to open. It was Sandy Springs, so sure. And I get in, and uh, somehow I was there late or something, and they didn't tell me. Uh, oh, I know what it was. I had to do. I had to bring on the middle guy. Then I had to do uh, another uh, five minutes or something. No, like you know, ten, twelve minutes in between. So I had to do a lot more in between where you normally wouldn't. But they didn't tell me why. Um, I don't know why it wouldn't have, didn't need to be a secret, but uh, so uh, so I bring on the middle guy who I'd never heard of. I guess I got there late or something, but um, uh, I bring on the, and he's hysterical. It's this this guy, very very southern, like he came out of you know the woodpile, you know, with a hat and you know chew, and he had a, a plaid shirt and a deep accent, and he 
you know, talked like, you know, like the uh, blue co- hysterical, killed, 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 killed. Then I go on 10 minutes, uh, do my uh, my stuff till I get a, a, a signal. Then I bring on Grant Turner, who comes out, who and he I had met with blonde hair and the, and the suit and very wrapped up. Then he did his set and then he killed. Um, and then after the show, I found out they were both Grant Turner. Grant Turner put on a costume and featured for himself. He got sick of his. Uh, he he just got felt burned out, and so he thought, "I'm going to do a. I'm going to do something completely different, a, a different personality, a different character. Still, obviously, part of himself. Everything is part of himself. So, um, whatever happened to him after that? He was very successful as a road comic. I don't know what happened to him. Um, Did he keep the two acts? Yeah, he kept doing it. And he kept doing it till, till as far uh, as he turned. As far as, you know, I stopped doing stand-up, but... Folks, um, find Grant Turner from Atlanta. Is he from Atlanta, even? I met him in Atlanta. He was a Southern act. There was a, The Southern guys were really good back then, uh, but probably still are. Uh, but that you could do. Be a different act. Instead of, you're loud and boom. Oh, sorry. You're no. loud and booming. Be qu- I did that. I did the same damn thing. Um, I used to smile to the fo- when I was an actual comic. Uh, when I was working, I, I would smile. I was very bubbly. It wasn't really me. When I came back uh, uh, and did it, I was deadpan, and I didn't smile. And I, oh, I was I was blue first time. When I came back, I was squeaky clean and deadpan. Um, I was much funnier. Uh, although I still didn't do it because then I got the view job, so I, I stopped doing that. But if you did something like that, find a new... You, yeah, like, you, I'm, I'm ready to toss the act in some ways. I think you should toss the act. I even did this in, in, when Caroline's was on 8th. I knew Joe Falzerano was booking it then, and uh, uh, I was sick of my act. I didn't do a Grant Turner or change it, but I wanted all new material, and I asked him. I said, I want to do 20 minutes, 20 new minutes. Um, and because I, I told him so I didn't get fired because right. how good would they be? Um, and uh, and I did that. I went on stage with 20 new minutes, not one old joke, and about 10 of those minutes I ended up keeping. Um, but I think just change your presentation. In real life, you're a different kind of funny than you are in your act. Be this kind of funny. Right. Be the funny. I you like are the advice. In your I don't interviews. know if we have an answer right now, but I do like the idea of be new. Be new. If you yeah, want to feel new, yeah. be new. Because you don't want to go out and say, I've been here two years and do the exact same thing that you've been doing everywhere. Because for one thing, you're going to get busted. I don't mind getting busted, too. I think that's kind of funny. They might not. You don't think so? I don't know. They might. It's, it's, it's not like I'm like going on a date and lying about having six kids at home. Right. What the hell do they care how long I've been in the... And arguably, know. arguably... Uh, if I choose doing more, well, I've been a if, podcaster for two years. I've been doing stand up. Arguably, if I give up the warm up work uh, on a daily basis, uh, I'm reinventing myself. I would say my new birth date is whatever re- I choose. If it to you be. reinvent your act, yeah, and your persona, then you can be brand new, and then it's th- then there's something very uh, authentic. There's also an argument to be made that the old act isn't working because it's not doing for you what it want what you want it to do. Yeah, or there, it is time to figure out. Um, uh, yeah, I, there's a lot to digest. You know yeah. where I'm going to be old though? Where on the time limit on the show? You're the oh, woman yeah. who told me to keep it down to 20 minutes, and I'm going to respect that and be old and now. And you know, I have to go home to the home due to my age. Yes, if you make it, if you make <laughs> it. Uh, hopefully, the accessoride <laughs> and your home health aid will be here we'll be soon. There waiting. Uh, so, folks, I think that we just learned a lot here. Uh, what was the whole line? Perception of success? Uh, yeah, the perception of success. And be new is another good piece be of new. wisdom. I like that. Uh, I like I'm going to ask you guys to be new and share this where you think it could be shared. Uh, if you guys like the show, rate it, share it with a friend. Tell a celebrity about it. Tell somebody who can take this to another level about it. And until we do this again, friends, uh, my name is Bob Kabrowski. <laughs> Tom Kelly's opening act and pinch hitting substitute. (laughs) And until next time, if I'm being new, good night, Nebraska. (laughs) 